get the journal up. Okay. Um, so this week we're looking at the, um, the remainder of Chapter 5. We started it last week. Um, this week we're really sort of getting into a bit more detail with it. Um, so we were talking a little bit about circular convolution, linear convolution, their relationship to discrete Fourier transforms. Um, and then, so mostly a lot of these weird circular properties that, that we, didn't, we haven't seen before with, with anything linear, um, especially if um, anything in the analog domain doesn't have this weird circular um, set of properties to it. So that's kind of where we were this week. All right, let's go to this, view, full page, perfect. Okay, um, so let's start with, um, I guess we'll just go you know, straight through the questions and uh, we might take a few, um, a few detours if we find something interesting. Um, so what is circular shift? Can somebody explain what circular shift is? Okay, so if I shift this, you can see that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Okay, if I shift that right by two, what do I get? Right, exactly. So let's see. So if we shift it right by two, this guy will go two. This one will go two. This one will go two. And then this one will go two. And this one will go two, right? So you'll wind up with, sorry, one, two. So you wind up with four, five, one, two, three. So we're all on the same page there. Okay, so this was shift right by two. Um, if I shift right by two, that's equivalent to shifting left by three, right? So we're all on the same page there. There's no big shocks there. So there's, there'd be no way of telling if I showed you these two and I said, did I shift right by two or left by three? You, you'd have no way of knowing. Um, What's going on with the circular shift? Why do we have it? Does anyone sort of get their finger on where this is going? Yeah? Uh, I guess the writer was saying that by the size of the sequence, you know, that if we just shift it linearly by two, then we would have things that left it as size. That's part of it. I mean, that's, that's absolutely true. Um, that's part of it. There's more to it than that, though. Right, that's kind of the other half of it. It's, we're both sort of, I think, pretty close to, to the reason. Um, I, I think the meat of it is circular shift is part of circular convolution. Right, and Circular convolution is something that we're going to introduce this week. And you can't do circular convolution without circular shift. And not just circular shift, but also flipping a sequence, um, doing a circular flip, for example, is something else that you need. So um, all these things that you said are true. Um, and I'll just add to that my own two cents, which is that you can't do circular, what's a better color? You can't do circular convolution without circular shift. Okay, so we'll start with that. Um, okay, 
Let's talk about circular flip for a second. Right, I call it circular flip. 